I'm so very happy to be here today to talk about something very positive, encouraging, and hopeful. And the best way to talk about the proposed National Infrastructure Bank is to take a look back at its predecessor, the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, which was the world's largest lender, the nation's biggest investor, and the New Deal's most popular agency. And ironically, it was started by a Republican president, Herbert Hoover. Now, to give you some perspective as to the scope of the RFC, it's important to realize the federal budget for 1932 was $4 billion. That's tiny compared to today when we measure our federal budget in the trillions of dollars. And if you want to uh, know what that's like in today's dollar, just multiply that 4 billion by about 20 and you'll see how much that is in today's dollars. But that's all to say the federal government in 1932 was tiny. And President Hubert Hoover was very reluctant to use the power of the government to address the devastation of the Great Depression. He was even once said that uh, to solve the Great Depression with legislation is like trying to pass a law to stop a hurricane. So he relied on saying the economy is good, confidence is high, the depression will disappear. But that did not work. And by 1932, unemployment was 25%. The value of stocks had declined by 75% and gross national product was sliced in half. People were eating grass to, to not starve and they were burning their furniture so they wouldn't freeze. Finally, in 1932, Herbert Hoover started the Reconstruction Finance Corporation thinking that making loans to banks, insurance companies, and railroads would build confidence and reverse the calamity of the Great Depression. That did not work. Uh, the RFC board was bipartisan at that time, and one of the uh, members was Jesse Jones. And he was uh, Houston's preeminent developer during the first half of the 20th century and a renowned banker. And he would observe about Hoover's RFC that he gave credit to Hoover for starting it, but he said it was a year too late and entirely too timid and slow. And if the RFC had invested five to seven billion dollars in 1931 and 32, the worst of the Great Depression would have been avoided. When President Franklin Roosevelt was inaugurated, he supercharged the RFC. He didn't cancel it because it had been created by another administration and another political party. He saw the merits in it, as did Jesse Jones, who was a master at using credit. So within five days of Roosevelt's inauguration, Congress passed legislation that allowed the RFC to enter into the economy to make loans to, to businesses where when the banks would not do it. And the RFC took off. And here's what it did. Through lending, not spending, and that's the important distinction with this program. It was all about making judicious loans that were all eventually repaid. The RFC, once it had the power, used lending to help people refinance, remodel their homes to buy new ones. It helped business owners refinance their hotels, apartment buildings, office buildings, so they could survive the onslaught of the Great Depression. The RFC revitalized the railroads through uh, helping them renegotiate their bonds so that they could pay back their loans at lower interest rates at the prevailing interest rates, as a matter of fact. And it also financed the development of high-speed trains. All, many of these things that the RFC did laid down the infrastructure that would be required for mobilization in the 1940s, only at that time, we didn't know that's why we were doing it. We were doing it to restore the economy, to save capitalism, and it worked. By 1936, 
these programs took, uh, had taken effect. Industrial output had doubled. Detroit was churning out more cars in 1936 than it had in 1929, and unemployment fell from 25% to 17%, still an unacceptable level. But these programs, despite what pundits might say today, were working. The RFC put its hands on every part of the economy. Its efforts were comprehensive. It couldn't just do one isolated thing and hope that it would restore the economy. It had to address all aspects of our national economy. Uh, for instance, for, the, for farmers, uh, surplus crops were depressing prices. Farmers were going bankrupt left and right. So the RFC created a corporation, the Credit Commodity Corporation. And with that instrument, it allowed farmers to store their crops. The RFC would make loans to farmers on those stored crops. It would take them off the market and allow prices to rise so that then the farmers could sell their products at a profit and save their land, save their homes, and save their farms. It was a tremendously successful effort. One of my favorites is the Electric Home Farm Administration. First, the RFC brought electricity to rural Americans. At that time, two out of 10 rural residents had electricity. 80% did not. So the RFC made loans to citizens, to excuse me, to cities, to utilities, to cooperatives, to bring electricity to everybody. So then they had all this power, but they had no money to go out and buy appliances. The RFC addressed that too. So a rural resident could go to the Main Street store and buy radio, a refrigerator, a fan, plug into the modern age. And the RFC would reimburse that Main Street store for the farmer's purchases. The utility company that was selling those appliances and the, excuse me, the utility company that was providing the power would then insert a small monthly charge into the farmer's bill with a little interest, and that was then forwarded to the RFC. By the time the program was liquidated, and that's an important point too, none of the RFC's programs were meant to exist in perpetuity. Once they outlived their useful life, they were canceled, and the monies were returned to the United States Treasury. That's what happened with the Electric Home Farm Administration. It was terminated in 1943 after it was no longer needed, but by then it had helped over a million families buy appliances, and according to Jesse Jones, it returned also a tidy profit to the taxpayers. And that would be my parents, my grandparents, your parents, your grandparents. Uh, the RFC was profitable, even during the calamity of the Great Depression, our worst economic downturn. It was helping people. It was revitalizing our economy and returning a profit to the United States taxpayers. The uh, RFC did, here's a great picture of infrastructure. It built bridges, tunnels, aqueducts, levees, such an important thing today as the Texas Gulf Coast and the Louisiana Gulf Coast is being smacked with hurricanes one after another. And we are sitting on dynamite because when a hurricane goes directly into Houston, into the port of Houston, we will have an environmental calamity, the likes which we have never seen. We continue to talk about building infrastructure, dikes that will protect the Texas Gulf Coast and the Houston uh, Ship Channel, but it has yet to be done. And a new infrastructure bank is the perfect mechanism to address that need. Just like the RFC built tunnels, bridges, aqueducts when we needed them back then in the 1930s. Um, the uh, RFC also helped us prepare for world war. And I think that's just as important as what it did during the Great Depression. As war was spreading throughout Europe, we were completely unprepared, just like we were unprepared for the pandemic and climate change today. 
our military ranked 17th in the world in terms of its size in 1939. The German military budget was 20 times larger than ours. We had 2,500 antiquated airplanes and about 350 obsolete tanks. The Germans had 9,000 airplanes. The Japanese had 7,500 airplanes. Roosevelt said, we need to build 50,000 airplanes a year. The trouble was because of neutrality acts and public opposition to intervention in the European war, uh, Roosevelt's hands were tied and he could not get Congress to act. So what did he do? He turned to Jesse Jones and the Reconstruction Finance Corporations, the nation's infrastructure bank at that time. And here's what the RFC did then. It minimized what it had done during the Great Depression. So as I said, Hoover's last year's budget was $4 billion. In 1939, the budget had increased to about $10 billion, and that's primarily because of the Great Depression and the need to uh, address the calamity. The, just to give you perspective, so we had a $10 billion budget in 1939. By 1942, 1943, the military budget alone was $100 billion. That's how expansive the economy had become primarily through the Reconstruction Finance Corporation. So two years before the attacks on Pearl Harbor, the Reconstruction Finance Corporation began building the enormous factories that would manufacture the tanks, trucks, airplanes, and ships that were required to fight and win World War II. We had none of that beforehand. We ended up manufacturing more airplanes in a year than Germany, Japan, and Great Britain combined. If it had not been for these efforts, uh, through the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, there's no telling how the World War would have ended. And maybe the most miraculous thing it did that is so relevant today as we're trying, as we're struggling with the pandemic and how to address it is the development of synthetic rubber from the lab to mass production in less than two years. That began as well, two years before the attacks on Pearl Harbor when the Japanese overtook our supply of natural rubber in the Pacific Ocean. The Reconstruction Finance Corporation convened the heads of oil companies, chemical companies, scientists, and scholars. They got them all together to pool their patents so that they could figure out how do we create this vital substance. Once they figured it out, the Reconstruction Finance Corporation built the plants that manufactured synthetic rubber, and just like all of its plants, leased them to corporations to operate. It was a massive undertaking, but just like it had done through the Great Depression and World War II, everything was comprehensive. It didn't just focus on one aspect. It built the airplanes, but before it built the airplanes, it had to manufacture steel, magnesium, aluminum, which we did not have. We needed rubber for the tires of the airplanes. We needed wool for the uniforms of millions of soldiers. The Reconstruction Finance Corporation, our vital infrastructure bank during the Great Depression and World War II, accomplished these massive feats. And we can do that again today with our own infrastructure bank. But here's what it takes. It takes a belief in the power of good government to do these things. As Jesse Jones said in 1937 about economic recovery, it cannot be accomplished if we allow ourselves to believe that our government is our enemy. We must change our attitude about government. It's a good thing. It's patriotic to embrace our government and let it do the big things that only it is capable of doing.